Hey, what's happening? And today I'm doing a video on Turbulence FD in Lightwave, and this is just on a basic explosion. And I've got to tell you, there's quite a bit involved with this, and it's going to probably be a little longer than I normally make a video, but I think it's worth it just to quick start people into the program and working with Turbulence FD. So this is just a basic explosion, nothing fancy, but this program is fairly sophisticated, and it's prone sometimes to crash, and so just be prepared for that. And I'll do my best to kind of give you my tips and tricks along the way. So one of the things that I recommend doing first is you're going to go into the render tab and you're going to go to render properties and you go to volumetrics and make sure you have use legacy volumetrics enabled. And then I would also recommend having an SSD drive hooked up so you're not working from and caching to the same drive. So that's always advisable to try to minimize your crashes. And to get started, all we're going to do is we only need three objects. We need a null and an emitter and a fluid container. We're going to start with Lightwave and just doing a null and we're just going to leave it called null and there it is and then what we're going to do is we're going to go into turbulence fd and we're going to go to make well before i can do that and let's make my emitter so we're going to go to properties and we'll go fx add fx we're going to go emitter we're going to double click this and this is just a super basic effect. It's almost just like a firework exploding and it doesn't need to be that big of a deal. Turbulence FD or TFD will take it from there. So you just need to start the particles going and then the simulation will kind of take it from there. So for birth rate, we're gonna put in 500. A lot of these are the default settings. So we're not gonna have that much to worry about. And we're gonna change that to frame. And then we're gonna come down here and make that 2000. And that's all we're gonna do for that. And then we're gonna go into particles and we're gonna zero this out. So we're gonna zero. We're going to go zero. And then here we're going to put this at 12. The lifetime is short, very short. And there's a lot of parts and variability there. So we're, we're going to have six to 18 actually. So, and then we leave all that the same. So that's simple. And then here for all we're going to do is put explosion at eight and you can already see what's going on here. And then the last thing we're going to do is just put a little gravity on there. So we're going to put point negative four. And then if we want, we can turn off this because we don't need that and that is our particle effect so that part of it's really easy so you can just see kind of what what's going on there it's just like a firework almost boom and then from like here tfd will do the rest so now all we got to do is put an emitter in so we come here to make emitter and there it is our null and then we're just going to walk through some settings here so this is a 10 mm but what we're going to do is we're going to type in 0 0.04 and make it 40 millimeters and then we're going to go into we don't fill object we don't make a collision object and here's a little gotcha for you now i didn't realize this was a button and i was looking for this uh, particle property map and i couldn't find it <laughs> it's right here so you click on it and there's your map now this is a uh, really kind of funky it took me some a uh, while to get acquainted with this but you're going to be using this as you start dialing in your fire effects more these are called knots and you can drag them in it left click and drag them anywhere you want but if you're on that line and you right click you can create another knot and then you can click and drag it around. But if you want to delete it, you just click on it and then just hit delete. Now here's where I was getting really flustered because you want to put an S curve on this, but I wasn't sure how to do it. So it's really weird because you click on this and then if you come down here to this control, what's misleading about this is this is actually a two part control. So if you click here and then you click here, it bends the curve. And if you want to make it linear, you got to click here or there, I guess, and then it brings it back. So if you want to put the curve in, you got to click there and you got to click there and it bends a curve. So if I want to bend this curve, I got to click on it and then I got to click there and I got to click there. And that's all we got to do. But it was frustrating to try to figure that out. So we're done with general. Now for textures, I actually got to look at some notes here because I, I can't remember everything on here and there's a lot of little things that I got to remember. So for textures, all we're going to do here is we're just going to go three, tab one, and then four. That's all we're going to do for that. And then we'll move over to force and we're just going to set a couple things here. It looks like, whoops, hold on. Under force, actually, we're just going to set one thing. We're just going to set the velocity weight to 0.5. And then we're going to move to channels. And here we're just going to set the fuel to five and the burn to five. And that's it. So our emitter setup, our particle effect is set up, 
and all we have to do is do the container. Now, I actually got this as the group buy-in through Levity 3D, and when I got it, they actually sent it in uh, cats <laughs> under cats email. So actually, this is uh, should be under my name, but it, it shows it's him. But we got it fixed, but I haven't gone back and reloaded it in yet. So that's why it says that. If you wonder when anybody notices that, so under container, because I've done this a hundred times already, all we're going to do is we're going to go 10 tab 12 tab 10 tab now let me show you something here if i pull back so we've got our emitter in our container a couple rules here is that we don't want our container bigger than it needs to be but we also want it big enough to contain the effect so right now my emitter is sitting in the middle of the box and it's probably not where it needs to be so i could move the box or i can move the container and since i've got the controls right here i'm just going to go ahead and move the container so i've already played around with it and i know to get it where i need it i just need to type in 5.75 so now I've got a situation here where I've got my emitter in a container that's big enough for the effect and not too big. So that's kind of what you want to do. Now there's one other thing I want to point out to you is that when you look at this, you can actually see that the emitter isn't even all the way in the container because when the particles go down here, we actually don't even need that as a part of our simulation. So the emitter doesn't even have to be all the way in the container. You just need the particles in the container for whatever you need them for. So some of these particles will actually spill out of the container and that's perfectly fine. While I'm here, in this view, in per perspective view, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to position myself how I want to be for to look at this explosion. So I'm going to position myself right now is I'm going to come over here to this little tab right there and I'm going to switch match viewport perspective to the camera. And so now that's what the camera is going to see. And then I'm going to switch to camera view right now. With these simulations, one thing I've noticed is that once you get the simulations going, when you go to do different controls on Lightwave, sometimes it wants to re-simulate and things start getting real bothered down because the system's getting overwhelmed with everything and I don't want that so I want to get all my controls set now and I don't want to be trying to move them later when the system starts getting overwhelmed with everything all the work that it's got to do and stuff like that so now we're going to go through this tab here and I do have to look back at my notes for a second here. So here is where you're going to set your cache. And this is where I said I would recommend setting it to an SSD drive separate. So which I happen to have that here somewhere here. And uh, where is it? There it is. So I'm just going to go ahead and set that. And then I'm going to turn off the cache temperature. And the, the density and the burn are already set by default. There's nothing else we need to do on this container tab. Now these are all tabs within the tabs. And believe it or not, we've got about 20 to go through. So I'll try to go as quickly as I can here. So we're going to go to simulation and there's quite a few tabs, but a lot of them are on the default. For the solver, all we need to do is click adaptive tracer and close Y boundary. For up resing, we're not going to do anything. For timing, we're not going to do anything. For velocity, we're going to switch this to two. And then for wind, we're not going to leave it at default. Vorticity, we're going to change to eight. Now you'll notice when you do that, I think there's a channel for that. Let me see. Hold on here. Vorticity. Yeah, so vorticity, we want to actually change this to temperature. If I do that, there's a map on here I want to adjust. So I'm just going to drag this down to zero, pretty close to zero. And then I'm going to drag this to 0.1, like, like right that. And there's only just a couple maps that we have to adjust like that. And that's one of them. And that's vorticity. And then for turbulence, there is some stuff we got to change here on turbulence. So here we're going to switch this to two. And for the channel, we're going to switch it to burn. And again, we're going to do the same kind of thing. We're just going to pull that over and that over. And then here we're going to type in, we're going to change this to 0 0.03, which is 30 millimeters. And we're going to change this to 0 0.06, which is 60. And we're going to leave the rest like that and then let's see we're going to go to temperature i think there's only one thing we're going to change here make sure it's active and we're going to set the cooling to seven percent and that's all uh, we're going to do there and then we're going to go to density and just make sure it's activated we're not going to adjust anything here and then we'll go to fuel make sure it's activated and here we do want to make a couple adjustments here on fuel. We're going to change this to 1.2 and I hit tab and we're going to go 20 and 20. Okay. And then we're going to go to burn. Whoops. Burn. 
and make sure it's activated. And we're just gonna change this decay to 0 0.02. And once you get familiar with the program, you can come in here and start changing the controls and playing around with certain things. And there's a couple places I'll show you where you probably do wanna mess around with things. So then we're just gonna come here to the viewport and we're just gonna change the channel to burn. Once we do that, you can actually see something going on there. And then the last one is rendering. And we've got three final tabs. We're really on the home stretch here. And so if we come to rendering the general tab, let's see, what are we going to do here for that? Actually, we're going to change the step size to 10%. And that's all we're going to do for that. We really only have a little bit more to go. If you click on this, there is a thing a graph a map but we're not going to mess with that and then all we have to do is go to the smoke shader let me go back here so here on the smoke shader we're going to change the channel to density and if we look on the map we're again we're not going to do anything with that and that's all we got to do there and then we're going to go to the color and opacity and there's just a couple settings on here so the thickness we're going to change to five and this color we're just going to set it to a gray this is one of those settings that you might want to play around with but the gray that we're using right now is 072 and the green is going to be 68 or what is that 65 i'll put 68 and the last one is 064. Once you find settings that work well for you, it's probably best to write them down in a book or something or keep a note of them so then you don't have to keep or save the scene file so that you don't have to keep rebuilding ROM each time you find settings that work for yourself. And that may be the only settings that you need. On uh, subgrid detail, we're not going to change anything there. And then the last one is on illumination. And what we're going to do is here. Now this is something I wanted to talk about, multiple scattering. Every time, once we simulate out, every time you go to touch a control, it's going to want to re-simulate it and control it, and it's going to want to redo this. So sometimes if you're just kind of checking for some basic effects, you might want to disable this because it wants to rerun this every single time, and this ends up taking a lot of time on your re-renders. Because all we're really going to do is we're going to enable it, and we're just going to set it to 5. But I'm telling you that this will end up bogging up your system and wanting to run every single time and it starts getting kind of annoying. So you may want to, if you're just kind of playing with things, you may not even want to enable scattering until you're ready to do your final renders. Okay, we'll go here. The last tab, thank goodness, is the fire shader. We're going to set the channel to burn. And the one setting, and here on edit map, we're going to click on that. And all I'm going to do is, this is your the color of your fireball, right? And this makes it white. I thought it looked a little weird. So I'm just pulling it down a little little tiny bit into the top of the yellow and you may not like this and actually of all the of all the tabs and places that you want to mess around with controlling the look of your fireball this is probably one place that you would want to come and experiment with changing adding those knots in there and playing around with things and just seeing where you go because there's a lot you can do with this to change the look of the fireball i'm not gonna get into all that today because it's just a little too much it seems like too much already and believe it or not this is our last tab that we gotta mess with and this one is the color and opacity and we just have to make a couple settings here so we're just going to go four and the temp is 300 and the high temp is 2400 and that's it that's all of our settings if i come back on container we're ready to render this thing out now one thing i'll mention before i get to that when you do go to render it if we come in here to render and you go to render properties you want to render this as a png file let's see what happens if i let me just let me just switch to vpr for a second here see there goes that multiple scattering now you see you got a little bit of something going on there but let's go ahead and just turn off the backdrop see how it wants to run that every single time and it's not a problem when it's a little tiny thing but when it's a big thing it takes a long time Time. And you'll see when I go to render, as the render's taking longer, you know that the render's working because it, it's bogging down. It's, it's having to render more of a, a bigger and bigger fireball each time it goes along here on the timeline. But if I wanted to render this frame and I go render frame, see it runs that every single time. You go continue and then see how it runs every time. And then you go save RGB. You want to save it here as a, a PNG. 32 right there because then that'll save it with the alpha channel and then you can just composite it right into any other program whether it's as a frame or as a full scene so i just wanted to point that out so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to switch back into texture shaded and 
here we go. All I have to do is now is press this button. And if I did everything right, we should see the effect come. So this is going to ask me if I want to re overwrite my cache. And the answer is yes to that. And here it goes. Now I have all this turned off the update preview and also the simulate because it's going to bog the system down. I just want to point out that I can tell from watching this how things are going because if it renders really fast, I know something went wrong just because I've rendered this out so many times already. As this frame count starts going up higher, it's going to take longer and longer. But the slower it goes, then I know the effect's actually becoming a big fireball. And if you render this out and it renders really quickly, you know you probably did something wrong because it means it's just going to be like a dud. <laughs> it's just going to be some little tiny thing down here. If you're watching this and it's just taking its time, taking longer and longer with each frame, because you can see the frame moving down here, it's, it's moving slower each time. And that means that the fireball is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and taller and taller and taking up more and more volume. And it's having to do more and more calculations. So it's just one way of letting you know that it's probably working right. Hopefully it won't crash on you. It's not inconceivable that it will crash. And one thing I should have done that I didn't do is I should have saved this scene before I got this far down the, the rabbit hole, because if it crashes now, I'd have to go back and re-enter everything I just put in. So that was again, my mistake for not copying this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let it render out. I'm going to stop the video for right now, and then I'll just come back and do a quick little follow-up on what I ended up getting and what you, how you might want to tweak it yourself. So I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. I just rendered out a frame for the kind of look at of the fireball. And this is one created, and then this is the one that I actually just created together. So this is a little bit more yellow, and that may be too yellow for some people. You can go in and adjust the colors and the shaders to make things darker or however. You just have to go in and maybe adjust one setting at a time to get a look that you like. So this one actually I like a little bit better than this one, but it just depends. You know, this one is a little bit more yellow and lighter. That's just the one. And this one is a little bit darker. On this one, you'd probably pull down a little bit more on the yellows to get that kind of a look to get a little more, a little darker up there. So I, I think this is actually not a, a bad one here. What I ended up doing was if you come in here to turbulence, and you come into container if you go into it's under rendering the smoke shader and i think it's illumination may want to disable this because what happens is every time you go to render a frame it it wants to run the scattering effect and it really starts getting annoying so i would say if you're going to use multiple scattering don't enable it until you're at the very end and you're ready to do it so what i'm going to try to do now and this is going to take a lot longer is i'm going to try to render out a video of this this is kind of what i ended up getting the look of it, the overall structure of it. And so I like the overall structure of it. It's really just a question of tweaking the actual appearance of the fireball. And some of that could be done in uh, compositing too. So anyway, this was just meant to be kind of a quick, it went a little bit longer than I wanted to, introduction into using Turbulence FD inside of Lightwave. And I hope you found it helpful. So take care and I'll talk to you next time.